near north in Minneapolis. Uh, this happened about about a week ago. Yeah, it looks like it's about a week ago. So, again, same kind of thing. Uh, they were trying to displace a homeless encampment in uh, in the near north area of Minneapolis. Um, which, by the way, I love Minneapolis. Uh, I, I, I fucking have definitely, that's one of the cities I very much missed touring in this year. Um, it, it, it's, it's such a great fucking city. Um, but, you know, there's this homeless encampment near North. And police physically clashed with protesters. They, uh, they, you know, locked arms to stop the police from coming in to displace these homeless people. And, uh, of course, the police got violent and started beating the shit out of protesters. And when the protesters pushed back, that was the narrative that, that corporate media picked up. So the only thing that, that people got to see out of corporate media covering this stuff is, oh, man, look at these protesters getting violent towards the police. But they totally missed it. The police are the ones that initiated the violence. Um, uh, and, and we're trying to kick these people out of their, out of their homes, essentially out of what has become their homes. Right. And then, and then it begs the question is, you, you know, we talk about, uh, we, we talk about, uh, community policing, right? That's what a lot of these fucking talking heads on, on the news and these fucking vapid ass politicians will end up. Uh, addressing is, um, hey, what uh, what about community policing? These people are just trying to do good for the community. Well, half these people are not from the community. Half these people don't know how the the dynamics of these of these neighborhoods work. You know, uh, very very few police departments are actually community oriented. They're actually people that are the policemen in that neighborhood are also people that live in that neighborhood. Uh, very, very few. I think I, I am lucky enough to live in a place where that that seems to be the situation where most of the cops in this neighborhood live in this neighborhood. So they know the ins and outs of it. And they're not just arbitrarily like, you know, attacking people or, you know, like there's there's a time when I was walking down the south side, which is like this big party neighborhood. It was the daytime. And I was drinking a root beer and the cops like followed me down the street, stopped me. And they're like, what are you drinking? I was like, root beer. I showed them the bottle. And then they were like, oh, OK. And then they continued to like follow me down the fucking street as if I was going to like commit something. And I was like, it's root beer. But again, they have no idea. Like that neighborhood sells root beer in a glass. You know, like that's how, that's how out of touch these cops are. They don't even know that there is a fucking popular pizza spot where you can get root beer in a glass bottle. And they just followed me like half a block down the street. And then they turned off into a different street, right? Like this is the sort of shit, like community policing doesn't exist in America. Or if it does, it's it's so small that it's uh, that it becomes a negligible statistic. So I want to show you this video uh, of uh, one of the people talking about uh, why they decided to go to this protest. Let me click this here. Go, that's the one. Okay. This is the video here. Let me know if you can hear it. North has been around since October, and they've, you know, built some incredible infrastructure to be able to keep warm from the elements. Uh, we just went through a polar vortex. They managed to get through that uh, just fine, and then the, uh, the state wanted to come through and disrupt what they, the community they built. So, you know, the, the community defenders weren't having that. And then, you know, it, it escalated, and, you know, Madaria Arredondo, the Minneapolis Police uh, Department chief, went on a press conference and, you know, tried Look to, oh, the community, I was appalled by seeing the community members attack my officers. And it was like, you know, well, videos clearly show that it was the opposite. You know, it was the community members that were inquiring about why the police were showing up to evict the encampment in the first place. And we were met with tear gas and total indifference to our questions. People got brutalized and um, 
I don't know, man. It's, it's a lot of gaslighting from our uh, public officials and our politicians, our, lo our local ones, um, and nothing's getting done about this house's problem. Um, and it comes down to it's a lot of Band-Aids being slapped on wounds, but it's a surgical process that needs to start. They're framing it as there's like environmental hazards. Uh, that prevents them from being able to. So I want to, I want to point out one quick thing here is, uh, first of all, the cops definitely instigated that. You can see that in the video. And then they, and then they, uh, you know, take it to the next level where they're just punching the shit out of these community protectors. Uh, that's, that's what they call themselves, right? These are people that live in the community and, uh, you know, we're, they were basically being attacked for, for asking the question of why are the cops here? Uh, not just that, but you also have to look at the 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 infrastructure that these unhoused these homeless folks have built. They built it so that they can uh, they can handle the elements, right? And I see this sort of stuff uh, in various different spots. So we were we uh, I was driving back from from shopping. Uh, there's an Indian store I go to. It's it's you know a little further away. Uh, and I was driving back and it was like off the side of the highway and you could see there was a little homeless encampment built in between the exits. Uh, and again, very impressive what they can do with some tarp, with some jackets, with, uh, with some, with some, uh, tent supplies better than what I could do for sure. Uh, and I'm sure if you're in that condition, you, you, you would have to learn how to do that pretty darn quick. And I'm sure there are people that have been in that condition for, for long enough that can teach you how to do that. Right. Uh, and because they built this infrastructure for themselves and no longer need the protection of uh, of of, you know, a house or what have you. Uh, and and it, this is far more difficult than than living, you know, in an apartment or a house or wh or whatever. This is far more difficult. The, the elements are a lot closer to you than they were uh, than 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 the walls you see around me. But it's very impressive, and it does subvert the idea that you need to live in uh, in a place where you have to pay rent or a mortgage, right? It goes against that capitalist notion of, well, uh, housing is a right, but it's a right if you can pay for it. It goes against that notion. It makes landlords obsolete. It makes real estate agents obsolete because if housing is just something that's provided to you, uh, and you know the community kind of lends its hands in taking care of each other. Uh, in the neighborhoods, then what's the point of having this fucking structure around? It dissolves that illusion and it goes, oh, well, maybe maybe we can create better communities if we operate as a community, right? As long as we're starting to take care of each other. And maybe we don't need corporations. Maybe we don't need landlords. Maybe we don't need banks getting involved uh, with, with the housing system. So that's part of the reason because because these people have proved that they can live outside the system and still be valuable co uh, contributors to this community that's part of the reason why they want this shit torn down I, I, this is typical this is very typical of how capitalism operates you know they they try to do this with every large movement that shows up and again the easy way for people that don't want to live in these conditions and are forced to live in these conditions is simple provide them with housing but housing first again subverts that idea that you need to pay pay for a place that you live. It's just a right, and we have plenty of homes to house people. You can still make it a choice of where you want to live and all that sort of stuff. None of those choices get taken away. In fact, without the financial uh, block in place, you have even more choices, and you're even more free to pick where you want to live and how you want to live. Um, you know, and create a system of compassion rather than a creation, a system that is only built on prof profit and profitability. And if you can't contribute to that profitability, then, you know, fuck off. We'll, we're going to kick you out of the system. We're going to displace you. We're going to make your displacement illegal and, and make things, you know, 128,000 times harder for you. So let's continue with this video. Live in that area that they've uh, occupied. But also, like, they they're, they're keep naming off the open beds and shelters. Uh, first of all, it's an accurate number most time when they throw out these numbers. Second of all, there was a resident who is actually a spokesperson for Near North. And they said, when we get to these shelters, they have us under their thumb. I'd rather risk hypothermia than going in there and dealing with the shelters they're getting a bed at the shelter so that's a lot of yeah they're, they're giving out that, that narrative that those shelter beds are open it's like well 
dude, no one wants to sit through the winter in anywhere in any city, um, let alone the polar vortex in Minnesota. Um, so when they say, oh, there's shelter beds open, you know, people just choose to be homeless. And I hear a lot of people that parrot that narrative. And it's like, it, it's sad to just think people are like, just simple minded to believe that people want to be outside. There's not a deeper problem than that, you know? Again, real journalism right here. Uh, <laughs> real journalism, unicorn riot. Uh, so, like, there, there you saw it, right? Like, they, a lot of these people, it's harder to go through the shelter system. Uh, when you're in the shelter system, you are uh, under somebody's thumb. You, uh, you know, they, they might have stricter rules. Uh, you might not be able to meet these rules because, again, a lot of these people have jobs. So maybe they work two jobs in order to ensure that they can have food and put gas in their car and pay the bill for the car. But not and even those two jobs doesn't pay for rent. Right. So they're out in the streets and these rules don't don't um, don't make it easy for folks that have a job and are unhoused. They don't make it easy for, you know, people that kind of have to shift from different parts go from one part of the city to the next to panhandle to because that you know if they're in one part of the city for too long they get harassed by the cops or they get harassed by uh the the karen of the neighborhood as it were right um so these rules really don't help these people and it and it continues to make things harder so again the shelter system which is something that is supposed to make things easier for the unhoused is actually making things harder for the unhoused um uh, because it doesn't have that level of flexibility. So, you know, it's, th this is, show and again, the, the, the near North neighborhood, they themselves are coming out and saying, leave these people alone. And if you are going to get involved, then give them homes, right? Like one of the, one of the parts of the show that I, that, that I did last month uh, that you can see as a forkful of noodles video is talks about how Austin turned a hotel into a housing first program where that hotel room is where you live and they help you get a job and they help you get uh, rehab services and they help you get therapy services and they help you get medications that you might need. They help you get food. They help you get uh, assist signed up to assistance programs. This is what it should be. Right. Like not what we're seeing in Pittsburgh or Echo Park or Minneapolis or countless other cities across the country. That's that's for sure. And the system will claim that, oh, the real victims of homelessness are the communities where these homeless people exist. That's what they claim. Uh, when in reality, that's wrong because the people they claim are the victims are the ones that are out there fighting for these homeless people. All of the sanitation issues that they that they bring up, they go, well, you know, like I talked to Keith McHenry or I didn't get to talk to Keith McHenry. I was uh, Lee got Lee Camp got to talk to Keith McHenry and I was able to use that as a source for my video. Um, he brought up like, oh, well, people poop. If you feed them, they'll poop. And they go, well, why don't we just make a public toilet for them why isn't why don't we just do that you know and then they were like oh well that's crazy so they just built one and then they tore it down because of zoning or permits or some bullshit and it's like th then then you do it the reason why they're mad is because we're not going through the proper channels well the proper channels don't give a shit we do and we can just fucking make it happen so if there's an unhoused community and we can build a public toilet and the and the people of the community can figure out a decent way to dispose of all that shit. You know, Echo Park, for example, has a kitchen. And they take care of these people. And they feed these people. So they're not going around trying to steal food from, you know, the garbage of restaurants or panhandle on the side of the street to earn a couple bucks for a sandwich or something. the amount of people that choose to be homeless is a small percentage, maybe like two or three, right? And these are like kids that, 
go to college, come out, they get disillusioned by the system, and then they want to live their Jack Kerouac dream. And they go and they live in their cars. You know, for as as far as being a touring stand-up comedian, like I was part-time living out of my car. I was part-time homeless. I've slept in my car plenty of times. You know? Uh, it's this is it it shouldn't be this hard to take care of people especially in the greatest country on the planet we chastise other countries for having for for violating human rights what what do you call this the cops are beating the shit out of people protecting ho the underprivileged and unhoused people that are vulnerable and are in need when the community comes together and tries to protect them the cops beat the shit out of those protectors How is that not a violation of human rights? And and then um, America has the fucking audacity, the audacity to start chastising other countries and then use that as an excuse to go wage war. How are other countries not ready to fucking put economic sanctions on America and fucking wage war against America? Send troops here and humanitarian aid to overthrow this government <laughs> and install like something better. We do it to other countries. Watch, this video is going to get flagged now that I said that shit. I do want to play another uh, another video because this kind of this video kind of talks about how um, these guys are part of the community that they're claiming to uh, to be disrupting. Just short videos. New North is uh, one of the few men in the encampment for the unhoused, you know, this, that were seeking refuge from high housing prices and COVID-19. Like we have high housing prices and COVID-19. So this is a place where, again, they, the, the, the homeless have created these encampments in order to in order to safely house people against the elements. Uh, but also protect them from sp spreading COVID-19, right? That was a major problem. There was actually a doctor in Florida that almost got arrested because, oh man, d black people can't be doctors. Uh, he was a black doctor and he was going around, uh, I think it was Tampa. Uh, I Don't don't quote me, it, it might have not been Tampa. But he was he was basically going around giving these people masks and giving them physicals to make sure that, hey, are you... Do you have you contracted the virus? He was he was also giving them tests, right? Giving the physical tests, he was providing them with PPE, uh, giving them some some food and water, making sure that they're okay because COVID was spreading rampant. These people don't have an option of social distancing, these people don't have an option of quarantining and locking down in their houses. So, you know, it's uh he got arrested outside his own house because the cop thought he was stealing medical equipment. So now we're attacking doctors that are trying to take care of the unhoused. And so these unhoused now are forming these camps. And I'm sure these camps have existed for quite some time. But they're creating these, these little communities, these little societies where they have rules and they're, and they're able to socially distance and they're able to, uh, like they said, fight back against raise, uh, in increased cost of rent. That's what they're they're trying to gentrify these neighborhoods. So they push these people out and then they, you know, buy up property and stuff. Uh, and then they, you know, build a fucking strip mall or a luxury apartment condos or what, whatever the fuck where average Americans can't live. I can't afford to live in Minneapolis, unfortunately. Schizophrenic people we have, you know people who are who can't get decent housing because of their backgrounds uh, people fleeing from domestic violence uh, vulnerable adults with traumatic brain injury um just general people from the community that are street people that you know that don't have stable housing a core group of around 18 20 people who are full-time residents and then you know you have in associates and uh, people from the neighborhood people come from other encampments if some of us uh have been together through three encampments now, starting to paddle one this summer. So, say, you know, put a number on it. 
30 to 40 people. The camp gets supplies and resources uh, from a network of volunteers, associates, and, and, and advocates, uh, reporters, and mutual aid network. It's been indispensable. That's a huge part of it. But, you know, like, we self go Again, mutual aid. They aren't getting help from the government. Do you think these people got $1,400 fucking dollars? They got $1,400. Think of what they could do. Think of how much help they would have actually gotten. They, they ain't getting no stimulus check. They got their money through mutual aid. If you are somebody that doesn't need that $1,400, you should donate it immediately to a local mutual aid. Because boy fucking howdy could they use 1400 bucks. This is, but this, by the way, is, is the same kind of philosophy that the Black Panthers had. This is sort of the way that socialism operates. Somebody's in need. Okay, let's do what we can to help them. Under capitalism, it's, oh, somebody's in need. How can we imprison them? It's, it's all about trying to gentrify these neighborhoods too. Because they want these people out of this neighborhood so that they can build their luxury stuff and ignore the ick. Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to see the ick. We just want to pretend that we live in a land of milk and honey. Be out of touch. Jacob Fry in Minneapolis, who is sending police officers to go a a assault the community protectors and assault people like this gentleman here, doesn't really give a shit. You can come out and say whatever platitude he wants, but his actions speak otherwise. He should be condemning the police if he actually cared. He should be looking to implement his own housing first program if he really cared. I bet you Minneapolis ain't short of houses. Across the country right now, we could have a, a home for every homeless person on the streets. Easy. Let's keep going. Covered by communicating in, you know, in a respectful manner as, as much as possible. It's not, not the biggest thing the city needs, or this community needs, is for the city to get out the way. The camp is trying to, to um, is looking into using some of the funding that we've received due to our success and purchasing property, it's gardens, uh, aeroponics, you know, different, uh, you know, resource opportunities for people to practice sustainable skills, you know. I also like the idea of like a Habitat for Humanity type model where people who receive, you know, the blessing of, of, of this housing play a role in building it. Well, the camp can, can serve the greater unhoused community by providing an example. The wild, you know, debauchery and stuff that I expected would be happening, people were going to bed at night. They were grateful for a place where they could feel safe laying their head at night. And that's why people don't want to go to shelters and, and go to hotels and, 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 and people really need to understand that. That's what this community has provided. There you go. Here, uh, you, you support Near North on Patreon through their open collective or through direct aid. This video was came out in February of this year uh, and it's the Near North YouTube channel. Um, so there you go. You guys just heard what he said. They're he, they're they're trying to provide a uh, sustainable skills, so they're trying to learn sustainable skills, and uh, and try and just try to fucking help people. They want to try to utilize the Habitat for Humanity type model. I mean, what can can what what narrative? What fucking myth of homelessness? Oh, they're drug addled. They're raping people. They're masturbating on the streets. None of that's happening. They're going to bed. They're looking for a place where they can sleep comfortably and safely, and they have that in this community. They have that in Echo Park. They probably have that somewhere in Pittsburgh that we don't know about because nobody's shedding light on it. I mean, how much more proof do we need that capitalism is a system that thrives on torment and the exploitation of abuse? That's what the system thrives on. That's that's how the system survives. It manufactures more abuse, creates more traumatized people, and it tries to break the will 
That's what the system tries to do. And these there are people trying to push back against it. That community sounds awesome. That's how all communities should be run. You know, and, and in that in that sort of a sense, these people would have homes that they can live in. Without having to worry about rent, without having to worry about a landlord. That's that's what we need to see more of. And what are they doing? Because this community is operating and 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 is is, uh, you know, self-sustaining and is uh, partnered with a mutual aid network to feed these people, get them supplies and things of that sort. It wants to tear it down. Physically, violently with force. Let's check out your comments. Uh, Holly, yes, they're called sweeps. Yeah, it's sweep them under the rug. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're trying to do is they, they run these sweeps and they just kind of try to barrel through these fucking homeless encampments. Shane, as George Carlin said, uh, they need the homeless to exist so they can scare the middle class into slaving away so they don't end up like them. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, it also makes it also justifies, you know, mortgages uh, and the bank's involvement in mortgages. Oh, because somebody needs to manage the money end of housing landlords. Oh, well, how are you going to take care of a home without the without a landlord taking rent? And again, like I said, I've I've had a, some pretty good landlords. I've had some pretty major shysters in my life too. So. Mona, very good to see you. I am doing quite well. I'm doing okay today. Thank you for checking in. Uh, Syrup C, in Germany, there are very few cops in the street, and you can go weeks without seeing one, and it's fine. Uh, that sounds awesome. That sounds seriously fucking awesome. And uh, I wish that was the case here, because even in my little community, like I said, I think I live in a pretty good community where... Uh, people do take care of each other. They do like meal trains for people that are you know, that may have gone through surgery or lost a job or so on and so forth. They do they help people out. Um, and I see, I, I you know, when I drive around or walk around the neighborhood, I'll see a cop every few days, probably, maybe, um, at least once a week. I'll see somebody on patrol, but. You know, my older neighborhood, uh, I, and I didn't live too far from where I'm living now, I'd see a cop every day. I'd see a cop every day. You know, like, they're always patrolling the streets. And that that was a predominantly black neighborhood, and so that's, that's probably why. Um, I would love to live in that community. That community sounds fucking awesome. Uh, Holly says squatters can bring up, uh, bring buildings up to code. Then they try to kick them out. There's actually, uh, I, I found this out uh, through a podcast I listened to years ago that in New York city, if you actually live and can prove that you've like resided in a, in an abandoned building, the deed just gets turned over to you after a certain period of time. So there are people that would live covertly for, you know, I think it's like 90 days or something and they'll build up this building. They'll like fix shit up. They'll have running water, electricity, and all that sort of stuff. And then when the when they they uh, uh, the cops come in to kick them out, they can take them to court and say, we've been legally living here for 90 days. Here's all the work that we've done. And the deed just automatically goes to them. Which I kind of thought was fucking awesome. Uh, and there needs to be more laws like that. Uh, rules and shelters, some have curfews, some don't. People have to go, uh, go, go out while they're... Uh, while they clean people have to go out while they clean oh oh the like they have to clean the the shelters and then disease in the shelters if you're not too careful uh stealing in the shelters yeah it's it, there, there's a lot of different issues that i've read uh that can that go on in in uh in shelters and people absolutely do not choose to be homeless and like i said even the ones that do it, it's a, a a negligible percent you know it's usually some kids that uh have a fallback that have a home that they can go back to and they want to live their Jack Kerouac life where they bounce from city to city living in their car. If you're a stand-up comic, you're part, you're, you're part-time homeless. You know, I've, I've slept on people's couches. I've slept in my car, but would I, would I choose to, 
live i just fucked up my hair because i'm i'm looking at the computer like it's a fucking mirror instead of just doing what i naturally know to do with my hair um uh, anyway uh would i choose to just go live in the street right now no i know i'm not built for it i know i'm not built for it i would not make that choice for myself uh da, 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 da. no political will yes it's a violation of human rights yeah all of this stuff is is a violation of human rights and there's no no political will about that at all no political will to to overturn any of this stuff um fred uh <laughs> fred says can i travel by meal train oh man uh you just you just put a thought of just like a giant train made out of like donuts and f and like chicken and maybe some sandwiches or something and just, and that's just how the train is built and you have to eat your way before it gets to its final destination <laughs> i would love that that'd be awesome if we lived in a society where we could do that that'd be fucking awesome i would i would love that fred that sounds really really cool <laughs> uh cool Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.